Okay, so uh, it's, time, it's time for a talk. And uh, uh, Roman Avdeev will give a talk on Biru subgroups on FI and spherical varieties. So, Roman, please, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer, Anton, for this beautiful opportunity to speak. Um, uh, in this talk, I'm going to, um, to report uh, on a joint work, with, uh, joint work in progress with Ivan Arjans. Um, in the first part uh, of, uh, of my talk, I'm going to present a well-known description of uh, root subgroups uh, on affine toric varieties. So this description plays a crucial role, a role in the study of uh, the automorphism groups of affine toric varieties. And in the second part, uh, uh, I'm going to discuss our attempts to, to generalize some, some issues uh, arising in this picture to, to, the more, to the more general situation of affine spherical varieties, where the acting group is no more a torus. It will be an arbitrary connected reductive group. Let me start with uh, with some basic definitions. So, um, or maybe a notation. Um, uh, we work uh, over an algebraically closed field of characteristic zero, which is denoted by K. And the main object of my talk will be the additive group of K, uh, which is usually denoted by G, G A. Now let's uh, let's take uh, an affine irreducible algebraic variety X. And let's denote uh, k of x the algebra of regular functions in x. And now um, the first definition of a locally nilpotent derivation. You actually you have already seen this definition in Karina's talk. So uh, uh, a derivation is for every element. There is a suitable power of d which kills f. And now. Uh, now, the well-known fact says that uh, there is a bijection between the set of GA subgroups in the automorphism group of uh, X and the locally nilpotent derivations of, of the algebra of regular functions on X. So actually, uh, in this theorem, you, you need to consider the locally nilpotent derivations up to, up to scalar. Uh, and uh, as you also have seen uh, that uh, every locally nilpotent derivation of, of the algebra of functions gives rise to, to, to a GA sub just by taking the exponent. So this is a standard construction to, to, to obtain a GA action from, from a local nilpotent derivation on an affine variety. Now let's proceed to affine toric varieties. So let's take an algebraic torus T. Um, we denote by X of T the character lattice of T. And now uh, a T variety X uh, is all toric if it is normal, irreducible, and has an open T orbit. At this point, let me mention that usually uh, in the definition of toric variety, it is required that the toric act, uh, that the torus X effectively, but um, in our situation, uh, it's, not, it's not very convenient. So we, we restrict to this uh, more general definition. So we don't require the action of torus to be effective. And it is convenient for us. Now, given an affine toric uh, variety X, uh, we can consider its main combinatorial invariant, which is called the weight monoid. So we take the algebra of functions, of regular functions on X and uh, T semi-invariant functions. So this, this ways form a, a, a sub-monoid in the monoid uh, in lattice of T and it is called the weight monoid. Um, not, in this, um, not in this monoid, we can decompose algebra of regular functions uh, uh, into a direct sum of one-dimensional weight subspaces. So we, we just introduced some notation here. 
is a non-zero function. Uh, is a non-zero function of rate u, and to, we can also norm in such a way that the product of two um, of two such functions corresponding to u one and u two is just uh, the the third function corresponding to uh, to the sum. So we have a decomposition. So, so we have this decomposition of the algebra, uh, algebra of regular functions. Uh, and now, now we can introduce some additional notation. So take uh, an affine toric T variety X with that monoid gamma. We introduce the lattice generated by the weight monoid. So um, this will be a sub lattice in the character lattice of T. Then uh, next we we consider the rational vector space which is spent by this lattice M, and also we consider the core in this uh, in this rational uh, in this rational rational vector space cone generated by by the monoid. So uh, so given a so again given a, a an affine toric T variety, we we just introduce some combinatorial invariants. Uh, the monoid and the cone and the lattice and the rational vector space, and the fact that X is normal implies that the the monoid is uh, it is called saturated. Saturated means that uh, it equal it is equal to uh, to the interest of uh, some of some lattice with a convex polyhedral cone in this rational vector space. And now uh, the main classification theorem for for a fine toric variety says that um, actually if you want to classify a fine toric varieties, uh, this is equivalent just to classifying saturated submonoids uh, in the uh, in the character letters of T. So if if you if you assign um, the weight monoid to to an affine toric variety, then this this map this assignment will be the bijection be between the isomorph isomorphism classes of affine toric varieties and uh, and the saturated monoids in the character letters of T. Now, um, now we we need to introduce some monotation in order to uh, to go in the direction of uh, of root subgroups. So uh, we are going to to introduce some special um, G A actions on on the fine toric T varieties. And in order to describe this uh, the, such subgroups, we need to introduce some combinatorial some additional combinatorial notions. So we have an affine toric T variety X. Uh, we have uh, all the combinatorial objects uh, defined um, on the previous slide. And now I consider the dual lattice uh, to M of X. Uh, I denote it by N of X. And now uh, recall that we have, uh, we have uh, by the weight monoid. And for this call, we can consider uh, facets. Facets, which means that uh, so facets of co-dimension one. And now for every facet uh, of this cone, uh, we can we can consider the the unique primitive uh, unique primitive element in the dual lattice um, such that the inter intersection uh, of the kernel uh, of this lattice uh, of this element with with the cone is precisely our facet. And also, it uh, this element is directed in the uh, towards the interior of our cone, so the uh, non non negativity condition here. So basically, if if you uh, if you work with dual cones, uh, so uh, element uh, rho f is just a primitive element uh, on the ray on the ray of the dual cone, uh, which is which corresponds to the space f. Um, 
we form so for for every facet f we can consider such an element and now we consider all the facets and uh, form the set of such elements f i i denoted by p of x and now now we have the following natural bijections um first of all you consider the set uh, p of x of these primitive elements in the dual lattice uh, the next, uh, so it is in, by, in the with the facets of, of the cone C of X. And uh, the third set is the set of T stable prime divisors in X. So uh, you have, so again, you have, a, you have an, a fine toric variety X. By definition, it has an open, open T inside it. And the complement of this um, open orbit uh, will be the union of uh, of a set of uh, T-stable prime, and uh, so this set is actually in bijection with with the set of facets of uh, of our cone C of X. Um, next, I, I just uh, I just uh, demonstrate how to how to obtain the corresponding the corresponding T-stable prime divisor. Um, given a facet you just uh, so if you have a facet of of our uh, of your cone uh, you can just explicitly construct the ideal defining the uh, defining the the corresponding to stable prime device so these uh, so you you need to take uh, all of uh, all the elements ku which are not contained in this facet and so you take uh, the sum of all the corresponding one dimensional subspaces and this will be the precisely the ideal defining the corresponding T stable prime divisor. And now the key definition um, in this theory uh, is, is is that of a zero root. So an element uh, E of the lattice is called a zero zero root associated with with a if um, the element rho f corresponding to this facet takes the value man minus one on E. All the other elements uh, of P of x take non-negative values on E. So this is a definition. And uh, just one, um, just a little more notation. So with, uh, we, we introduce notations for all Dimasu roots associated with a given facet and also uh, a notation for for the set for the whole set of the mazure roots of, of, of this cone and now i can tell you i can show you um, an example as a picture so uh, in this case uh, the lattice m is two-dimensional has rank two um the cone by yellow, so you can see it. So we have a uh, cone C of X. Uh, this cone has two faces, uh, which are denoted by by green and by orange. F1 is green and uh, F2 is orange. Uh, for every for each of these facets, uh, I have drawn um, the corresponding elements rho F. You can see they are they are red. So this uh, this element uh, row F1 orthogonal to to the facet to the facet uh, one and uh, the second one row F2 orthogonal to the facet uh, F2 and now the Dimasu roots uh, corresponding to to the facet F1 they are all marked uh, so these are um, they are all these green points you can see here and the d major roots corresponding to the facet uh, f2 they are the orange points in this picture so you can see how it looks uh, so the set of uh, the set of d major roots of a given cone so if you are new to this uh, so you can you can just have a have an impression of uh, how it looks like and now notion of a demasu root we can we can 
we'll proceed to to uh, to discuss in two root subgroups on the fine torque varieties. So uh, a T root subgroup is just a GA subgroup uh, in the automorphism group of uh, X. So uh, a GA subgroup normalized by T. So we don't consider uh, uh, all the all the GA subgroups, but we uh, um, only uh, such subgroups which are normalized by the actin torus T. Um, now I I just tell that. Um, uh, a very natural, uh, very natural situation. So, once uh, you are given a T root subgroup, uh, then uh, it has a well-defined weight. So once it is normalized, so um, uh, norm. So if if your subgroup is normalized by the actin torus, uh, then the parameter is just multiplied by by some character of T. So and this character is called the weight of, of the corresponding. T root subgroups, uh, two root subgroup on, on, on fine torque variety. And now um, I, pre I tell you uh, about um, the main result. So I actually, um, um, the main theorem about uh, T root subgroups on the fine torque varieties. So this uh, main theorem says that every T root subgroup is uniquely determined by its weight. The second part of this theorem says that the set of weights of T root subgroups on X is precisely the set of all de Mazur roots. And the third part uh, says that for every T stable prime divisor, there is a T root subgroup of, uh, on X that moves uh, D. Uh, so, this actually, um, this theorem is uh, the starting point for us. Uh, when we started generalization. So um, our main goal is to understand how this theorem generalizes uh, to the setting where to the setting of spherical varieties. So let's me, let me skip this. Uh, so now now I proceed generalizations. Um, I'm going to consider actions of of a connected reductive algebraic group G. The Borel subgroup inside G, and also I fix the maximal torus in B, and denote by U the unipotent radical of B. So um, the basic example uh, of uh, all these objects uh, is given in SLN. So uh, a standard choice of a Borel subgroup in SLN is a group of all upper, upper triangle matrices, and the standard choice of a uh, maximal torus is just all the diagonal matrices. Um, one more piece of notation. Um, we consider so inside the set of characters uh, inside the set of characters of B, you can you can choose the set of dominant weights of B. So this is a standard notion. Uh, it is known that the set of dominant weights is in bijection with simple finite dimensional G modules, and for every dominant weight lambda. The corresponding simple finite dimensional G module is just uh, that with highest weight lambda. And you can also see that with the whole lattice, the whole character lattice of T. Well, now let's proceed to find spherical varieties. So a proper generalization of the notion of a toric variety in this setting is the, the notion of a spherical So a G variety is spherical it is, if it is normal, irreducible, and has an open B orbit. So it is important that we, uh, we, we can uh, open, we require uh, open B orbit, not G orbit. And now there is a theorem by Wimberg and Kimmelfeld uh, saying that uh, a normal irreducible fine G variety X is spherical if and only if uh, the algebra of regular functions is multiplicity free as a G model. So given this, we can consider uh, an affine spherical G variety X. We can also introduce uh, the weight noid of gamma it consists of weights of all B semi invariant B semi invariant functions uh, in this algebra. It will be a sub in lambda plus. 
so in the monoid of dominant weights. Now uh, we have uh, the decomposition of the algebra of functions into a direct sum of simple G modules corresponding to to uh, all weights in the weight monoid. We can also some adjust uh, normalize the highest weight vectors. And now we we and uh, so now we introduce a very similar notation. So we, we are going to generalize the the picture from the case. So again we consider the lattice generated by this weight monoid. We consider the rational vector space. We consider the cone. Uh, again the normal of x means that the cone is saturated. Now, uh, just uh, a general effect from the theory of, of a fine spherical varieties, uh, saying that for every saturated submonoid in the monoid of dominant weights, uh, there are only finitely many fine spherical G varieties with this weight monoid. So the difference uh, between this case and the Tory case uh, is that in the toric case, there, there was uh, a fine toric variety with a given weight monoid. But in this case, in the in, in this more general case of the fine spherical varieties, uh, there may be finite many different fine spherical varieties with a given weight monoid. But by the way, uh, in this case, there is one distinguished fine spherical variety with a given weight monoid. Uh, it is the so-called horospherical fine variety. I'll I'll come back to it uh, uh, later. Uh, now we now we define in a similar way the notion of a B root subgroup uh, on an affine spherical variety. So we take a G A subgroup normalized by B. In the same way, we define the weight of a B root subgroup. And uh, our first result says that if you take a um, B root subgroup on X, then its weight is always dominant. So if you have a B root subgroup for, on an affine spherical variety, then its weight is necessarily dominant. This is the first uh, on the set of weights of B root subgroups. And actually, um, unfortunately, unlike the Tory case, um, we can construct examples uh, showing that uh, uh, a B root subgroup is not in general uniquely determined by its weight. So this property fails in the general case. So this property of uh, of uh, yeah of the uh, of the third case. Now um, let's discuss uh, the division of B root subgroups into two classes, vertical and horizontal. So we consider the algebra of U invariant regular functions. Um, we can consider its decomposition. Um, so uh, this uh, this algebra is acted by T, and it turns out that um, under the action of T, uh, it becomes uh, multiplicity free as a T module, and so it corresponds to some affine toric variety. Sorry. And now, if you have a B root subgroup on X, uh, then the action of H preserves uh, this subalgebra and and induces some action on on the corresponding affine toric variety. And um, H is called vertical if we, if it acts trivially on the corresponding toric variety and horizontal otherwise. And here I give you a remark that um, H is vertical if and only if it preserves the open B orbit, and H is horizontal if and only if it moves a B single prime divider in X. Now, um, example, uh, a very natural example providing um, some vertical, um, vertical B root subgroups is given by T normalized central subgroups uh, of U. So you can consider the, um, for example, if G is simple, you can consider the, the root sub to the highest root. 
Um, remark that in the toric case there is no such division and all subgroups, uh, all root subgroups are horizontal. And now the proposition says that uh, okay, so if if we have a, an induced action of T on 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 some affine toric variety, then um, the set of its weights should be uh, so every weight should be the major root of the corresponding cone. So we get a restriction. Uh, on weights of horizontal Beirut subgroups. So every such weight should be dominant and should be a demasur root of the corresponding cone. And um, so a simple corollary saying that uh, in the case where uh, the weight monoid is given by just the intersection of some lattice with, with, the, with the monoid of dominant weights, uh, in this situation, there are no horizontal Beirut subgroups on X. So this is a very simple. Corollary. And now uh, uh, I'm going to present some results uh, in the horospherical case. So, um, in general, um, our attempts uh, uh, to generalize the picture from the toric case uh, are not really successful because uh, we we discovered many many um, different uh, effects, which uh, which which not appear in the toric case. But a very nice case of uh, fine spherical varieties is given by horospherical ones. And in this case, we could prove something. So an affine spherical G variety is horospherical if the corresponding decomposition into simple G models. Uh, so if you take uh, a product, if you take the product of two, uh, of two components, then you necessarily, uh, fall uh, in, in, in the third component uh, uh, corresponding to the sum. And now the first theorem says that uh, for horospherical, for, horospher uh, for refined horospherical varieties, the set of weights of horizontal B root subgroups coincides, so pre it is, it precisely coincides with the set of dominant de Maizure roots. And uh, is to in the proof uh, is to um, present explicit constructions of uh, the corresponding local and important de derivation. So this is uh, actually a very non-trivial part. Um, and we have all, we also have examples that uh, you know, this theorem is not true in the general case. So for general affine spherical varieties. And now the the last statement. So. Uh, uh, a generalization of the third part of the theorem or, or on toric varieties says that for horospherical X, um, for every G stable prime divisor in X, we can find a B root subgroup uh, on X which can which can move this B, B stable prime divisor. So in this in this case, we obtained a generalization uh, of the third uh, statement of the main theorem. Of uh, on uh, in the toric case, so uh, that's all. Thank you for your Thank attention. You. Thank you. Any questions? So, is it correct that uh, this Dimazur roots? So, maybe this is not related to the main topic of your talk, but Dimazur roots appear, appeared in in the work of Dimazur. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, yes. Maybe you can advise some. Yeah, I, I want to read something, but I don't know. Sorry? Can, can you advise some maybe work or some review paper in maybe English about the Mazur roots? Uh, so the... uh, there is a very nice paper by David Cox uh, on, on the automorphism groups of toric varieties. So I think uh, you can you can read something uh, there, but um, also so uh, actually um, this study of automorphism groups uh, of, of, on uh, on the fine toric varieties uh, this is uh, this has become an active area in in recent years. So actually 
you can find many recent papers uh, where all this stuff is uh, is explained properly i think so i think there are many papers by ivan arjansev who who studied uh, who used these uh, demazu roots okay. okay thank you sorry sorry so uh, yeah you you can i i think that uh, the best is arjansev ramaskevich i think it is very well explained mm. Okay. okay, thank you. Oh, any more questions? Uh, probably, if not, well, thank you, uh, Roma. That was still.